Greetings fellow film fans, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mercy and this is the Funny Pajamas YouTube channel. Now this week's episode of WandaVision gave us a whole lot to impact. Now before we begin and really get into the stuff, let me tell you straight out that this is a spoiler heavy video. So if you haven't checked out the latest version that is uh, episode 8 of WandaVision, Please go check it out, favorite this video and then come back and watch this video. Let's have a good time. Now let's get down to it. And before I get to that, I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to smash that like button and the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time I post something new. Now this episode was by far the most emotional and the most gut-wrenching episode so far that we've had of WandaVision. This to the creators, kudos, they have really written this episode well. There are certain uh, moments and lines and sentences in this episode that are classic. They are so, they're so poignant. Also, the acting, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany really show their acting chops. And no one can outdo Catherine Hahn. She's amazing in this episode. So let's get right down to it. Now we begin start off with, uh, we start off with a flashback. In Salem, Massachusetts at around 1693, this is somewhere around the middle of the, the Salem witch trials. However, and uh, Agatha is being led away, she's tied up and she's, she's you know, restrained and she's being led away. However, she is being, uh, you know, questioned by her very own coven of witches. So we see her, you know, uh, tied up to a po to a stake and standing and all her, the witches in her coven sur surrounding her along with her mother. And they seem to be interrogating her. And from what we gather from this, she has chosen to, you know, dive into and practice some really dark magic that is actually beyond, above and beyond her age and her station and which is basically forbidden in their coven and among all the witches. And when she's confronted about it, she, at first she says, no, I didn't. And then she's like, yes, I did, but I'm a good person. I want to use it for good. You know, the... I was able to make it bend to my will. Now, this gives us an idea that she's sort of, you know, she wants, has that curiosity to learn new types of magic, new spells, increase her power. She wants to become powerful and is basically power hungry. And she's got a huge curiosity to match. Anyway, the witches deem her guilty and they, they use their powers on her. And this should have, this should be killing her and destroying her. But instead, she turns the tables on them and ends up sucking out their life force and killing the entire coven, including her mother, all in one go. So now we basically begin off straight away, showing how Agatha is actually a very evil person. Now, after this, we move, we cut back to the basement. Wanda is being captive by Agatha Harkness and Agatha is, and Wanda tries to use the powers and she finds she's unable to use the powers and then that's when Agatha Harkness is like you know you see these runes and she points to various runes and they glow around the place within the boundary of these runes no witch can cast a spell other than the witch that has cast the runes now this sort of begins a first line of thinking as in I mean, Wanda did get her power from the Infinity Stone, or so we thought. So if she got the power from the Infinity Stone, normal rules of witchcraft and arcane magic should basically not apply to her since she's technically not supposed to be a witch because her powers originate from the Infinity Stone. At least that's how we have been led to believe. And in this episode, a whole lot of reveals get dropped. A lot of, you know, uh, plot points get exposed and we, we f learn out a lot more on about what has happened now like i had told you previously this this episode is a huge heavy flashback heavy episode as such we see a lot of important poignant moments in wanda's life what has changed her what has affected her the most and i gotta say her life is pretty much depressing very depressing and she's really had a tough time and this i have to say this episode was my favorite episode anyway let's get down to it so uh, it's at this point while Agatha is holding uh, Wanda captive that Agatha said, you know, let's slip a few major reveals, you know, like she like about Pietro or as she calls him, Pietro. Apparently, unlike what I and a whole lot of others have theorized, he 
does not seem to be the quicksilver from the fox universe instead according to agatha he is a sort of crystalline projection she wasn't able to practice necromancy because she couldn't get the body of uh, pietro maximov since he was somewhere else in some other co continent itself she wasn't able to get her hands on him and hence perform necromancy so instead she opted for the second best she created a crystalline projection which acted as her eyes and ears this guy who we saw as wanda's brother is in that is evan peters is in fact not the quicksilver of the fox universe neither is he her brother so i'm kind of guessing at the end Evan Peters character will come in and will I do think he will play a positive role I'm hoping but now we are for sure that he that that door that opened the door to the X-Men the Fox X-Men seems to be firmly shut now this begins to make me think I mean that was a solid really good way of introducing the X-Men but whatever it is Feige's probably got a a hell of a plan and I'm just waiting to see if this is not how they did it this is a prime choice a prime opportunity if they didn't they must have had something even better down the line in order to bring in the x men but i digress and at this point agnes starts confronting wand and tells her you know i am capable of transmutation and on a small level and mind control and stuff but what you have done here in westview it's beyond anything i have and at this point it kind of feels like Agatha is kind of jealous of Wanda because Agatha like we saw her in 1693 so Agatha is basically centuries old and she has been searching and looking and practicing magic all this while all the while trying to gain power you know you know amass the biggest amount of spells and yet she has not been able to achieve a fraction of what Wanda has achieved so i am guessing there is a bit of jealousy there sort of like a professional jealousy going on and she she wants to know Wanda's secret probably because she wants to acquire it for herself you know this sort of uh, harkens back to the last episode's ad the ad for your magic with the little boy sitting in the island and he's trying to open the you know cup of uh, yogurt or whatever uh, and his life force gets drained away this sort of harkens back to the beginning where we see agatha draining the life force of the members of her coven and absorbing it into herself so maybe after she discovers wanda's source of powers and how she controls it she's probably going to do that to wanda she'll probably try to suck in wanda's powers and take it up for herself that's just a theory but i'm guessing that's where she is headed any anyway, wanda is like i don't know what you're talking about and all that stuff and uh, agatha is like okay let's take a trip down memory lane to see to jog your memories to see what really caused you to set this up so wanda is about to be given a full show a rerun of all her most traumatic most sad most down to down in the dumps times we begin first straight off with her life as with her family in sokovia her father is a dvd salesman who sells these dvd copies of these old uh, you know sitcoms like i love lucy bewitched malcolm in the middle uh, brady bunch stuff like that and uh, what he is unable to sell he comes and brings it home and the family has like a you know a movie or a watch night where they watch these sitcoms and it's also a way he says that, so that his kids can learn english and they sit down and they are watching an episode of the dick van dyke show and while they are doing it the infamous bombing occurs and you know the parents are killed and that also oh infamous stark industries bomb lands and it is at this point that wonder and pietro we know there for like two days waiting for the bomb to go off but it was defective but it is at this point while wanda and uh, agatha are experiencing this are witnessing this Agatha puts forward a theory she's like oh so you used your probability magic to stop the bomb from going off it was it was not pure luck you used probability magic you, that she theorizes it and that gives us our first look that maybe wanda was born inherently with certain powers maybe a witchcraft the powers of the witches so you know we we start to see that maybe she already had a bit of the power a latent bit you know we this is explored as we go further ahead now this memory shows us how she has an affinity for all these sitcoms and that gives us an idea of 
why when she created the hex she created it around things that you know made her happy that reminded her of her family next we move on to the hydra labs now we know she was being experiment she and her brother signed up for experiments with hydra no it was their world of trying to it was their way of trying to rectify the world of you know ridding the world of tony stark and where you know because of her hatred for stark and his weapons so we see loki's scepter and she comes into the lab she's brought into the lab and at this point we find out that none of the previous subjects who were subjected to this experiment ever survived and she steps forward the doors close and she's locked in she heads towards the scepter and then the scepter the, the covering of the of the mind stone it breaks there's an explosion and a bright flash of light and it says this point if you look carefully she sees a silhouette of someone and this silhouette looks very much like as if someone is wearing the the traditional you know scarlet witch costume along with the with the pointy crown and stuff you know now who this is is this over is she seeing herself in the future or is she seeing an alternate version of herself or is this someone else in the past who has had similar past or the sim same moniker so there's a lot going on here so she does see that silhouette and then she absorbs the part this is how you know and then agatha starts theorizing she's like oh i see i'm getting an idea what happening now you were exposed to the infinity stone and that sort of kick started your past it amplified your past so she basically says uh, the exposure to the infinity stone amplified your past and you know said what would have otherwise died on the vine basically stating that wanda already had powers of the witch had a magical powers and the infinity stone only amplified it tenfold or thousandfold or how many fold and made made her all the more powerful so then we move on to a, a scene which a memory which seems to be placed around the time of uh, captain america civil war uh, you know wanda is in her room in the avengers compound and she's once again watching you know a sit reruns of a sitcom i believe it was malcolm in the middle and she's like grieving she's just lost her brother and vision walks in and he they sit and they have a you know a heart to heart talk and he tries to console her she's like i'm always being flooded with grief it comes in waves and then vision says one of the most poignant one of the most meaningful one of the best lines of this series maybe not just the series i'd say it was a it's a it's a beautiful line i'd say in maybe all the mc one of the you know one of the best and he says what if what is grief if not lo love persevering and that and you know he cheers her up and he has this outlook you know he is being an android has never felt loss as such and he's still got this outlook and this just shows us how very compatible wanda and vision are that these two pair, this pair was actually basically almost made for each other how they find solace and meaning in each other and in that i thought this scene was very well written beautifully executed and wonderfully acted uh you know it was really well put together and that is clearly at this and all the emotional beats that they seem to hit and the actors bringing it out so well that easily makes this episode my favorite episode okay after all this is done the next memory down the line ends up being uh you know wander at sword now we did get previously in one of the previous episodes director hayward sort of showing of uh, of security footage of wander breaking into the sword facility to steal vision's body and uh, this is sort of touches up on that and we'll get we'll see how events actually unfold because it's pretty obvious from what goes on here the director uh, hayward pretty much lied soon after the blip people are coming back there are families reuniting and you know people are so happy and she comes back and vision is dead so she comes to sword she's i mean she probably blip she was somewhere in wakanda and she and vision is gone you know for good when everyone else all their loved ones have returned her loved one her the man she loved who gave her solace who comforted her in her 
you know in her in her sad times he's gone that her last living connection is gone so she comes off to to shield and sh sword and tells them see i just want to give him a f proper funeral and a proper bur burial he did so much he deserves at least that courtesy so then she uh, director hayward says let her in and she goes and meets director hayward and hayward is like he's pretty crass and he's so crude and you, you can see that he's heartless and he takes her back and shows her you know the the lab where they are basically you know dismantling vision you know and he's the 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 choice of words he uses like he says we've been trying to bring him online he does not say alive you know he's like he's so cold hearted and and it in the beginning i'll tell you honestly i was i was thinking maybe he was not that bad a guy i know he started off pretty good but then get to see how his bad side in this episode and i i really hate him after this episode he was so mean to wanda and he he shows her their vision chop shop where he where they chop we are dismantling the love of her life she gets so angry she destroys the glass and enters the lab now this is where the events of the story as narrated by hayward differ from what actually happened she walks over to vision's head places her hand on his forehead and tries to feel around with her you know uh, powers and she's not able to feel anything and she realizes that yes vision's actually gone she says i can't feel you you're not here anymore and then that's like the final realization that he's gone she's never going to get him back and so she just turns around and leaves so obviously she's not stolen the body of vision which contradicts what hayward had said to had told monica rambo and jimmy wu and darcy and a whole lot of other people during the briefing so she leaves she gets into her car and at this point i'm thinking is she going to go back when is she going to go and steal but she doesn't she drives off to westview new jersey she's got this envelope on her seat and uh, once she goes into the town of westview westview is you know i'll tell you what she did was basically an improvement to westview than what westview appears to be after the blip it's desolate there are people very few people walking around they are not happy you know and uh, it, it, there's a very dark and gloomy and glum atmosphere everywhere so she drives in you know and stops at this empty plot she opens the you know paper which is in the envelope and we see that it's it's actually a deed for that empty plot and that and vision it is a deed that was bought by vision and vision has even written there for us to grow old in you know so he bought that plot hoping for them to live a life together to grow old together you know to have a future maybe probably get married down the line have kids you know he 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 wanted that just like she wanted it and he wanted he even took steps to you know bring it to fruition and that is when she has the last straw she breaks down and sort of her powers just they explode they start expanding and it covers and starts to run and cover the entire town and you see the transformation of the town from present day to the 50s the black and white colors the old cars the old stores the old uh, televisions and the electronics and stuff and her past spread and she creates the hex and then and she starts building a house on the spot where she, on that plot and once she's done with that her powers manifest and you see the past that all this while her the basic color of her past is like red but after this you see that a burst of light comes out through her and it's yellow and you see the formation of a humanoid being formed and vision gets created so now we know that the vision she has inside wand westview is not the real vision the real vision's body is still back at sword so this vision is totally her own creation totally her own construction and is not the same as the previous one totally different vision but he seems to have you know he's modeled after what she wants him to be you know but at the same time he's capable of his own logic talk he has his past he's capable of reasoning his free will is still there means she's created a being you know from scratch and that's when and then uh, vision is like welcome home wanda and then there's a pic then there's another version of her the black and white version the 50s version and they come sit together and they are watching tv all the while wanda is standing 
beside the real Wanda standing beside and viewing and experiencing these memories and that's when it cuts and we are inside a studio with the sets you know the background sets of the house and all that and I'm guessing these were the real sets that they used in the making of the first few episodes because it was said that the first few episodes were taped in front of a live audience so they're inside the studio and Agatha is you know she's She's clapping. She's finally understood it. She's got the answers. She knows how Wanda did this, how she created the X. So she snaps her fingers and then she disappears. And Wanda hears her kids crying. And she rushes out to meet her, you know, to get them. And, and Agatha is like, she's floating in the air and she's got the two kids, on, you know, in her grasp. And she's, you know, holding them and controlling them, sort of. And at this point, I'm pretty sure... That Wanda knows that these kids aren't her real kids, that they are not real. But at the same time, she still cares about them. To her, they are her kids. To her, they are real. She cares about them. She still loves them. And she's willing to do anything. And that's when Agatha is like, look at you. You are like, do you know what you are? You use chaos magic, you know. And the infinity stone that amplified your chaos magic, you use that to create this. You are a very powerful being, a being that is called the Scarlet Witch. You know, this is a he, Scarlet Witch is a mythical being capable of spontaneous creation. You know, and uh, and Agatha sort of you know mocks her. You have all this power, all this capability, and what do you do? You sit and make breakfast for dinner. She sort of you know insults her, and all that she's created. So I'm pretty sure at this point. Uh, Wanda, you know, I'm pretty sure at this point that Agnes and Wanda are going to either duke it out or something. I'm pretty sure Agnes is after Wanda's powers. Her natural born curiosity and her hunger to get the most power, the best spells, the greatest abilities. She's probably going to try and drain this all from Wanda. Now, that we end with that, ep with that uh, scene. And then we move and then the post credits the post credit scene comes. Now in the post credit scene, we are out once again outside the hex and director Hayward is like, you see what the guy is really up to, the little sneaky little cretin is up to. Like the sneaky little cretin is up to. He seems to have they have reassembled Vision's body, which clearly means that they had the body all along and they lied about Wanda stealing it. Now he probably did this so that he could, you know, his all his stories that they need to get the weapon back that Wanda stole. That's why we need to go into the hex is all lies. So he's reassembled Vision's body and the drone in one of the episodes which Wanda brings out and throws away still has a, a, an amount of res, her residual energy. They use this to revive Vision. And, but this vision is different. He's completely white. Now, there is a white vision in the comics who's a totally different entity from the original vision. Now, there, if, there's even a part, I believe, in the comics where the white vision tells, the, uh, you know, Timmy and Billy that I am not your father. I may have his some of his memories, but he and I are totally different people. We are not the same. So, white vision is... I have a feeling White Vision is going to be evil and going to be doing the bidding of Hayward. And I do think at the end, there is going to be a face-off between Vision from the Hex and White Vision. And now I'm guessing Vision doesn't survive somehow. Somehow she doesn't survive. Why I say this is because in Spider-Man uh, Spider Far From Home uh, takes place after the events of WandaVision. And in Spider-Man Far From Home, they say that Vision is dead. I mean, there's an immemorial and stuff and all. And even in the conversation, they state that Vision is dead. So I'm not think. I think Vision will not come out of this alive. I do think he's going to go toe to toe with White Vision. And I'm not, I don't think he makes it out, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm leaning towards that. Now, I really did feel on... You know, I really did feel bad that Evan Peters wasn't the Fox Quicksilver. But hey, what they gave us instead is pretty good. I will be admit being disappointed, but the episode was great. Now moving forward, I kind of wonder they've got they've got just one episode left. And this plot wise, they seem to have a lot of ground to cover. 
what happened to monica rambo and what happened to pietro last time we saw in the post credit scene pietro catches monica rambo and what's going on there what about vision where is he right now he's probably headed over what about darcy what is she what role does she have to play also jimmy who is still outside is he going to meet this mysterious aerospace uh, engineer or was that just a bluff you know uh, what is haver actually planning on doing so many questions this episode was so well done they answered so many questions at the same time they gave us so many further questions that we asked now i'm pretty sure the theory that of mephisto and nightmare being the big bads are pretty much off the table so i don't think they are the big bads like we know agatha was just attracted to the ma- massive amount of magical energy that wanda released so in the end yes it was wanda herself who created the whole thing she is the one who created and is in charge of the hex moving forward i do think i hope that they don't leave this uh the series completely open ended i hope they answer all our questions enough and just leave a few questions that i think they will carry over to the next properties or the next episodes you have to take in mind not everyone has access to these um uh, episodes and if they are just watching the movie it needs to be connective enough that even if they didn't watch one division they will be able to get the next movie which i believe is spider man far from home so Sp- spider man no way home the title was released so i'm guessing that they will close it up i'm guessing vision dies i am thinking that the kids will somehow survive i do think that the kids will survive so uh, i don't know why i don't know how call it a gut feeling but i do think kids will survive now you just see hold, you you guys can hold me on to it in case the kids you know they they do not get to make it out so uh this episode was you know it was excellent it was excellent entertainment well rounded well done well written well executed well put together well acted it was it was quality not just television quality cinematic experience quality entertainment and i loved it by far this is my favorite episode only because it managed to hit all the right points all the right notes emotionally it was heartbreaking gut wrenching you feel for wanda wanda and i loved this episode by far my favorite episode now the next episode i hope they don't make it too cookie cutter you know like the basic you know fight off between the big bad and the heroes and all i hope they don't make it too you know n- you know the general comic booky ending or the cookie cutter ending i hope they do differ i am looking forward to what they do what they you know bring forward i am looking forward to where they go with white vision and uh, i you know a lot of my theories were debunked i will say the quick silver one uh, agatha harkness i'm glad and also the theory about mephisto and nightmare i don't think they are involved uh, what are your theories did your theories come to fruition did, you know did what what you think actually happen what are your uh, predictions for the next episode just one more episode and then we are probably going to have another week break and then i think it begins with uh, falcon and winter soldier so i'm totally hyped for that but this uh series has set quite a high bar and i tell you i do not envy falcon and winter soldier they need to pick up uh, or the loki series for that matter they need to pick up where this left off and somehow manage to you know live up to it or at this or at least you know or exceed its quality or at least live up to this quality it's already set the bar pretty high and i'm glad about it i'm just hoping that the other shows down the line they do look pretty good i do say the loki show looks amazing uh, i do hope down the line it does uh, you know uh, it, it, i hope they do come out be- good i hope they maintain the quality the level of excellence now uh, that's all i have to say so uh, before i go uh, you can always contact me on twitter simply at mercy underscore d on instagram at mercy underscore sd or the funny pajamas facebook page simply at funny dot pajamas and uh, you can email me definitely send me your emails simply at mercy at funny hyphen pajamas dot com uh, funny pajamas also has a standalone web page check it out for the editorials and the reviews i haven't uh, been on that site much but i do plan to pick up but there are other stuff that you can go check it out simply at www dot funny hyphen pajamas dot com and everywhere 
pajamas with a y that's all i have for you right now thanks for tuning in everyone see you in the next time hit the comment section down below let me know what you think this is mercy signing out bye